that have been listed here include the increase of sugarcane production and productivity, enhancing milling efficiency and competitiveness of sugar. Um, uh, I think this uh, particular uh, recommendation is in line with the cheap importation of sugar that we've been talking about and then promoting favorable sugar marketing and trade and compliance with the Comesa recommendations. This is actually, you touched on this uh, a bit uh, earlier and also increasing sugar product. Oh yeah, this is the same. What um, I wanted to ask and maybe understand uh, from you gentlemen, especially you, uh, Waziri Kirwa, mm -hmm. you've talked about getting rid of the obsolete uh, technology that is very old. Yeah. You've talked about, David, you've talked about getting rid of all the debt that is currently being owed uh, to the sugar millers. Let's assume the government uh, goes ahead and actually listens to you and does all this. These are some of the recommendations that were done in 2003. How expensive would it be to do all of this. It would cost the taxpayer billions of shillings. And are we sure that we are going to recoup all this money back after the investment? And are we sure that the next people who will be in charge of those particular mills will do due diligence and ensure that money is not looted? Now, because uh, let me start. You see, if the country will lose billions by writing off debt, then the question ought to be, will they ever get that money? The answer is no. They are never going to get it. We are never going to be able to get to a point where today now we will be able to do 50 billion. What's the cost? I did an assessment of putting up a basic with the same efficiency as what exists currently, or even, I mean, almost 1.5 times better. It would cost about 400 million shillings to put a new plant. The world has moved that way. A, a factory that one would tell you previously you need 2 billion or whatever it is. So at the cost of half a billion, you would put up one plant. For two billion, you would have sorted out yeah. Sony, Chemilil, yeah. Moroni, Miwani, Transoya. That is far, far cheaper mm -hmm. considering the extent to which the sugar mm -hmm. impacts on the economy. Some of these towns are now asleep. Nothing is going on there. I mm -hmm. am a product of sugarcane farming. My father has just retired from Sony Sugar Company. I know that Sony Sugar, which was budding and buzzing with life, mm -hmm. is now a den for people who are unable to even afford electricity. People who cannot take their children to school. Right. People who are unable to pay their debts because they had loans running. Now they have been auctioned. Life is so miserable. So what is three billion shillings? Mm -hmm. Pumping it in, in the right place for the right reason, for the economy's sake, after all. Isn't the sugar sector part of the manufacturing that's part of the big four agenda? Now, if we want to honestly cure this, then, because when we talk about sugar development levy, that's great. Then put up a fund, right. a, a preliminary fund of about five billion. Let these people go, both farmers, researchers, as well as the factories themselves, mm -hmm. and put up new structures. It will save you the running costs. Where you would spend 200 or let's say 50 million shillings in terms of recurrent cost, which goes to electricity, which goes to maintenance from time and again, because it's constantly breaking down, you will have reduced that to about 10 million shillings running cost. What does that do to you? Enables you to put together the money made from the factory and direct it to agronomy, direct it to nuclear uh, estates, direct it to reaching out to farmers, outgrow farmers, ensuring that you research more than you do this, putting up the plants that are being proposed, whether you want an ethanol plant or something else, mm -hmm. it helps you to diversify. But until you do that, you're locked down in this continuous circle. Right. Yeah. Honorable Saolo, let's talk about COMESA, which has also come up in terms of the recommendation. Kenya is part yes. of COMESA. We also have the Africa Free Trade, which has been part of the conversation on the continent. Yes. But uh, And that seems to be one of the key challenges right yeah. there. It has its good and it has its bad for Kenya being um, yes. part of COMESA. But what is it? what is jeopardizing or what makes it so difficult <coughs> to protect our local farming sugarcane sector? As I say, for me, <coughs> what makes it difficult is the bureaucrats. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is Even at the level of Comesa and free trade? <laughs> because, you see, yes, as I say, uh, Comesa, Kenya is the dominant trading partner in Comesa. But being dominant with other products, you know, uh, one could argue whether they are Kenyan origin or not, that's a different matter. But the point is, sugar 
seems to be a problem when it comes to Comesa raises questions. And that's what you're asking me. What is the issue? And my answer to you is the issue is the bureaucrats. Kilimo. I wish there were farmers in Kilimo, like Honorable Kiro. Mm. People who are in Kilimo usually generally are not farmers. Mm. These are people who have studied, mm -hmm. very good people, you know, with very good qualifications, certificates, Bachelor of Agriculture, whatever, agronomy, horticulture, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But in terms of organic relationship with the farmer, that is the gap. And that's where the problem is. Then from there, you come to the administration of the of, of the sugar cane, which is like, for instance, previous Kenya Sugar Board, or now AFA. Hmm? You find now, Kenya, Kenya can easily compete, because I, there's no way I can understand that Uganda hmm, is over competing Kenya when it comes to sugar. But it's not, there's something funny somewhere, or Zambia, or whatever. The issue is, it, the inputs that we have here, there's the issue of taxation. I'll give you an example. Mm. The Kenyan farmer is paid currently 3,800 uh, <coughs> per ton. It takes 10 tons to produce one ton of sugar. Now, that is 38,000 shillings. One ton of sugar is 100 kilograms. One oh, kg of sugar is 120 shillings, currently the market. That's 120,000 shillings. Right. The farmer is earning 3,800. On top of it, it's the farmer who pays for the transportation again of his or her good. So, West Kenya pays the lowest in terms of transport. It's easier for me, for instance, from Pungoma to sell my cane, one ton, to West Kenya, where they charge me 450 shillings, than selling my cane to Nzoya, which charges me 1,000 shillings. So there's that problem. The deduction, VAT, is charged, again, on the farmer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, all these taxation measures make our sugar very expensive. Yeah. As, I get, as I say again, we only depend on sugar. We do not produce other products. Yeah. There's no cogeneration and other no products that will make the cost of production yeah. cheaper. Okay. So that way, it makes competition with the commerce difficult. But yeah. if there is a legislation, for instance, or a policy, Mm -hmm. to reduce taxation or to do cogen, turn yeah. the sugar industry into an energy industry, yeah. we'll compete okay. equally with the commercial without an issue. All right. Honorable Kiro, you mentioned three things, governance, agronomy, and technical support. Yes. What more would you have liked to see in the recommendations that Faisal is reading here? Well, um, I don't have a lot of quarrel with the recommendations. Mm -hmm. What I have a lot of quarrel with is the effectiveness with which there is going to be a follow through. Yeah. That's the main challenge. And as I said, the problem in Africa and even in the sugar industry is leadership. Yeah. You can say all these technical things, but if you do not follow up with serious leadership, mm -hmm. there is nothing that is going to be done. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk of the cost of production or high production costs, and, uh, and, and uh, it is a factor of all these issues, mm -hmm. starting with research, if you do not have the right variety, then you have the wrong seed. Mm -hmm. If you do not have the timeliness with which you are planting, then you have a problem. Mm -hmm. If the farmer cannot weed in good time, then you have a problem. Mm -hmm. If you do not get fertilizer at affordable rate, then you have a problem. If you cannot access credit when you want to operate, uh, affordable credit and adequate credit, mm -hmm. then you have a problem. Now, that compromises productivity by unit area, and also it increases the cost of production and it makes us less competitive than our neighboring countries. Now, coupled with that is the issue of governance. Mm. Corruption is the overriding factor. You know, I'm using governance for lack of uh, a better term. Otherwise, governance includes the issue of corruption. Right. Mismanagement and corruption. M mismanagement and corruption. <laughs> now, finally, <laughs> is the communication. It seems, if let's say the task force went round without taking the views of farmers, because somebody took it for granted that farmers do not have very strong views. That is where we go wrong. We do not communicate. Even right. Klimo House. Right. Klimo House should be able to com co communicate with Sugar Board. How they compromise the sugar development levy, which was money that was produced mm -hmm. through the sugar cane that farmer produced because we are living about 7%. So that we use it for development.
Here's the thing, Honorable Kiputo. Yeah. In, in just your statements and your conversations since we began the show, yeah. you've really echoed the issue of research, research, research. Yeah. But um, Kenya's Research Foundation um, funding between the years of 2013 and 2018 has yeah. dropped by 91%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Between okay. 2013 and 2018. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one of the recommendations on this um, report yeah. is that the sugar development levy should be reinstated to sort of um, strengthen the financial sector. But you know what happens? That yeah. cost goes to Kenyans. The but price of sugar will go up. Oh, yeah. Is this the money. best solution to research yeah. and funding? Where did the money go? I yeah. left money. Yes. You know, I'm telling you, Zinzi, yes. when I left, when I took over the ministry, sugar farmers areas was 2.7 billion. Yes. By the time I left the ministry on 8th of January, when the new cabinet was appointed, mm -hmm. 2008, there was no single farmer owed by the sugar, uh, sugar mills. I can say that without any measure of contradiction. That was my mission. I don't want farmers to be owed. And the mills now absorbed that money, but there was still money in, in, in sugar development fund. Mm -hmm. Where did it go when it was taken to Arfa? It's called Arfa or whatever. Arfa. Yeah. Arfa. <laughs> now, when you form an organization called Arfa, you're actually increasing the bureaucracy. Mm. When a farmer wants money on Monday, you are giving him money Monday of the other month. So what are you doing? You are delaying the process of giving money to the farmer. Right. And the farmer does not understand all these things. He knows how to plant sugar cane. And he knows how to wait for it. And he knows how to harvest. He burns it, then he harvests. So that the snakes are reduced, they run away. So, now, if you do all those things in a facade way, you are messing the industry. Okay. Let us not pretend, even if you brought an angel as a minister, yeah. as long as you have these bureaucracies, you are you are likely to suffer the same consequences. Okay. Let, let, let's bring in Laura Utino first. She's our oh. uh, correspondent in Kisumu and find out what the people there think. Laura, good morning. It's good to see you there. What are the sentiments of the farmers on the ground? Well, good morning to you, Trevor. And uh, the sugarcane issue has been quite contentious, especially when it comes to uh, farmers, because of the reactions we have been getting from them ever since the uh, task force report was released is that, uh, that uh, the report was not inclusive of farmers' mm -hmm. views. They were arguing that uh, the one uh, farmer, uh, let me say they call them purported farmer who was sitting in the, uh, the task force, had alleged that his uh, comments or his views were not captured in that report. So just to get it straight from the horse's mouth, uh, let me speak to Arum, who is one of the farmers here in Kisumu County. Can you uh, explain to us as farmers what exactly is the main bone of contention that you have with the task force report that was handed over to the president? Thank you. My name is Michael Arum. Uh, I'm a sugarcane farmer from Nyando Sugar Belt. Uh, I wanted to say this. The task force report, uh, the task force itself, when it was, it was formed, uh, farmers were not included. And the only the sugarcane farmer or the representative of the sugarcane farmers actually rejected the report saying that all the views of the farmers were not captured particularly on zoning particularly on privatization and again on issues to do with the pricing and transport issues those are the systems in the in, in cane farming wherever the world so we need issues to do with the how the transport issues cause all along we have been talking about the farm gate issues, yet the farm gate has not been implemented. If today we have multiple way bridges all over, uh, uh, all over, people, are, other millers are now fighting today, say that we don't want multiple way bridges, yet the multiple way bridge is moving us towards achieving the farm gate pricing system. Number two, uh, even if I leave that, we need to be told who actually should be actually be paying the transport for cane. Is it the farmer or the miller? The report did not come out clearly to say that, although they mentioned the issue of the transport should be actually taken up as one of the uh, serious costs to the, to, the, to, I mean, to the farmer. Yet they fell short of telling, giving a policy direction on who actually need to bear the cost of transport. Is it the miller? Is it the farmer? To us, as the farmers, we, we, we've been uh, around and uh, we have been saying that we need to be, our, our pricing, the price would be computed, uh, computed towards, fra, I mean, I mean farm, gate, farm gate price. Now, number two is about cane pricing. The cane pricing issue is another issue that farmers actually said, we need a policy of sharing the sharing ratio. 
actually today it is 50 50 but then if it is 50 50 uh, uh, what is the cost component of do, for producing a cane is it according to the report is 68 percent now 68 percent would be going to back, back to the, the farmer and 32 the, 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 the remaining percentage should go back to the miller yet they fell short of actually putting it very clearly that the sharing resource should be reorganized so that the farmers would get a, a, actually a fair price of his uh, 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 of his cane then the other issue which is most contentious is about zoning we have been from a, a situation whereby farmers have, be, have been zoned to Chemelil, to Mumias, to Nzoia, to Miwani, to Zoni, and then to, to, to Muhoroni. And this actually has actually resulted into uh, farmers' areas being accumulated by these state owned sugar mills. Uh, we are in a situation whereby today we have uh, other millers which are uh, actually are efficient. Now, the, the government, or the tax for so to say, is want to take us back to zoning system, whereby farmers need to be zoned to t continue supplying these inefficient meals, or, 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 or they are now calling it a, a, a cane catchment area, whereby they want to say that we have to, we have to do a, mon a monopsony, whereby one miller buy a cane, of farmers from a given area. That is the, the meaning of cane catchment area, which farmers don't want to hear or don't want to believe. We want to say this to the tax force report, I mean to the, the, the tax force uh, committee, that actually, if anything, we don't want to do anything, we want to, don't want to hear anything to do with the zoning. Number one, zoning cannot address production. Ne zoning will never address productivity. Zoning will actually be against competition. Zoning will never address what is called efficiency in the sugar issues. So actually, the, the, the report was supposed to tell us how we are going to be efficient, which they failed to do. The report was supposed to tell us how they are going to increase productivity, which they didn't do. The report will tell us how they are going to increase production, which in a, in, in, in a way or another, they tried to address by bringing in the, uh, uh, recommending the introduction of the sugar development levy, we, whereby we are saying that is okay. But let them tell us how the zone Zoning will address productivity. It will never address productivity. Neither will it pro address production on itself as a zoning. Yeah. Now to conclude, I'm saying instead of what is called the cane catchment and the rest, what everybody else is saying about the regulation, I mean, I mean the regulation, the best order in the industry can be addressed by contract farming, and that is the end, and that's what the farmer needs. We have been doing cane without contract, and with, with, without contract. The contract that we have been seeing have been designed by the miller. We need co standard contracts signed, I mean agreed upon between the farmer and the miller and the farmer organization. And then to finish, about the structure of the industry, we want a farmer organization which is strong, and well funded we want a miller organization which is strong and well funded and then we have, want the government and our, and our share and nothing else yes. thank you thank you very much well trevor the sugar development levy according to uh, the task force report is to be capped at seven percent to uh, take back those funds into research to ensure that uh, the quality of cane that farmers will be uh, get, will be growing in their farms will be a sort of sustainable uh, cane to to withstand all the uh, conditions so maybe just one last farmer the report is already at the president's table what now is the next plan for you because last year we saw you formed a parallel task force all together and right now you're coming out to say that there are certain pertinent issues for farmers that have not been addressed so what exactly will be your next move briefly as farmers well our next move is eh, I'm happy uh, my colleague have addressed certain issues eh? but before I come into that one of the things that according to us is lacking in the in the report is that uh, what has brought down the, the sugar industry is nothing other than inefficiency. There is serious inefficiency in both the government mills. Uh, there is the issue of high debts. Eh? The debts which we have ever been promised that it will be written off. And the issue of uh, cost of production. Those three components, if it is addressed, the sugar industry will, will definitely move. And the other th uh, part of what is in the report is the, the, the privatization. As we are talking today, there, there is no time frame, there is no time guideline in that report on how, how the privatization is going to be undertaken. And the worst part of it, as we are talking today, privatization commission has no board. We have a chair and there is no board. In the absence of the board, mem of the board, 
even the, the privatization uh, cannot, cannot, cannot have a sitting. So for us, what we are trying to say is that we believe that the report which was handed over to the president is a policy paper. It is not a law. So it, we, ex, we expect is either the report will be tabled to the cabinet, from the cabinet the report will go to parliament. For us, our take is simple. Number one is a part of the component in the report is about the zoning. It is illegal. The bay, three bench high court judge, judges in Kakamega between the case of West Kenya and Butali. And uh, funnily enough, in the same ruling, eh, Kenya National Federation of Sugar Cane Farmers, CEO, uh, Francis Waswa, sworn an affidavit whereby he articulated very clearly that uh, farmers are free to deliver their cane to any meal they want. Indeed, and he yeah, ended okay. up being in the, in the task force. Okay. So what us, our intervention is, yes. we are moving to Parliamentary Committee of Agriculture in a week time. We have already written to them. We are only waiting for their, for their invitation. Yes. Finally, if that is not addressed, yes. we are ready to readdress the matter in court yes. and we'll be able to stamp that within the law. Well, thank you very much, thank Trevor. You can I'm see how young, passionate young. the farmers are on matters of uh, the uh, sugar report and how that will be affecting uh, sugar, uh, sugar cane development within the various catchment areas. But then yesterday, uh, Trevor, just to wind up, we had uh, the CEO for, of the Special Economic Zone Authority uh, who indicated that uh, they uh, have plans to talk to the Privatization Commission to leave out Miwani in uh, the a privatization agenda indicating that that sugar mill uh, should be or ideally according to them that uh, the Miwani sugar uh, company should be incorporated within the Kisumu special economic zone uh, in a bid to try and revive it under that fold so of course it's a story that will be following up on what the special economic zone authority will be doing in terms of reviving uh, Miwani sugar factory and how the conversation around uh, the sugar task force report will be panning out uh, to the farmers uh, within the Nyanza and the Western sugar belts Trevor. Well thanks Thanks, Laura. That's Laura Tino speaking to very passionate farmers right. in Kisumu there. And Faisal, you have a few more recommendations to go through plus figures and then we we'll take closing remarks from our guests. Yeah, um, uh, some of the other recommendations that have actually come out of the report includes um, pricing and funding mechanisms that enhance income to stakeholders and improve competitiveness on public owned sugar factories. Now, um, let's just take a quick look on the debt that is actually owed to the sugar mills. Now, they are on air. Mohoroni outgrows uh, the uh, financial institutions 305 million shillings and an interest of 85 million shillings, bringing a total, the total to 390 million shillings. Miwani, um, they owe 11 million shillings, an interest of uh, 3 million shillings, bringing the total to 11, uh, 14 million shillings. Chemilin, David, I'm, <laughs> David. I'm actually looking at you and I'm talking about this. Um, David, actually, like you can see. <laughs> million shillings an interest of 85 million shillings and uh, that brings the total to 271 million shillings they're actually quite a number there and before i can't go through all of that because of time so the total um, when it comes to principal owed to financial institutions is 1.9 billion shillings the interest is 506 million shillings bringing the total to 2.44 2 billion shillings now before um, we actually uh, respond and give our final remarks the interest is actually quite high mm -hmm. accounting for almost 30 percent <coughs> of the principal amount is this something to worry about with 271 million yeah but that's why i said <laughs> who's gonna pay it mm. Mm. who's gonna pay it under the circumstances and that is just money owed to financial institutions by the way mm. there's money owed to government <laughs> because government also gave loans to these sugar industries there's money owed to the taxman. Uh -huh. The total amount of financial weight on these institutions is ridiculous. We have to look ourselves in the mirror and say, is this the way and the path we want to walk? Are we going to have a situation? If we do not intervene in a very you know, uh, extreme manner to transform the sector, to absolutely buy new plants, to write off debt and start on a new slate. Mm -hmm. Are we certain we are going to make a, a single a single path forward? That's not going to happen. Now, 
Allow me to, re to, re to respond to Saul Lobusolo's uh, friends on TV. <laughs> He's a good mobilizer. Are, you see, this is the good thing about These politicians. Are the are yeah. Politicians <laughs> are very good. Yeah. There is no chance that farmers, mere farmers, would have all that knowledge and there are only two of them next to a TV <laughs> person. Wow. That's good. <laughs> but, that said, uh -huh. uh, zoning is a very complicated issue. And I understand even the desire to do away with zoning. Mm. We can only do away with zoning when we have a level playing field, we have a situation where the private actors in this space, in the sugar space, have been accused of being sugar barons. They have been accused of abusing the Comesa trade agreement, importing sugar into Comesa, other Comesa countries, then ferrying in sugar from those Comesa countries into Kenya as though they are Comesa country produced, which has given them leverage over the public ones. So you have a sugar factory that has 58 or 105 trucks to go and get sugar. Mm -hmm. And you have a government institution that has 30 trucks or tractors that are limping. Then you want to tell me that these people are going to compete on the same level ground. Yet, the person who has a competitive, comparative advantage raids the backyard because there is no way of even the, country, uh, the public factories <laughs> mm -hmm. catching up with them when they raid their private kin. You know, so you cannot say that you don't want zoning, yet you want to be a contracted farmer. <laughs> Contracting right. as a farmer is more the same <laughs> as zoning. It's only that the radius is what we are not talking about. Here's the thing, David. You know, some of the numbers we've been looking at, at least that one, the 271 million one, you didn't say you didn't agree with that one. But earlier on, you said that some numbers in the report that don't persuade you, like 70% of, of our sugar market having to be brought out from outside markets. Here's the thing, David. Uh, what, some of, what are some of the sugar trade consumptions are you seeing? If you're not agreeing with these numbers. L l listen to me. Did the amount of sugar you take uh, uh, reduce? Has it changed? Has your mother stopped taking sugar at home? Have your, has your family reduced its intake of sugar? No, it hasn't, okay? Has the population gone up? Yes. By what percentages has the acreage of sugar gone down? 15%. How then has it translated to a 70% need? It doesn't add up. You see, in terms of looking at the amounts owed by these factories to the financial institutions, we have records that state it. Are you able to be given the processes and procedures that led to the research and statistical uh, uh, basis for what has been declared as the gap in the sugar consumption in this country? There is none. And if it is there, are, you, are we able to test its veracity? You are not able to. And that's why I state, I dare the ministry and the people who do this research, and I know it's going to be a little time before Kinoti and Haji catch up with them, to bring to the fore how they ended up with these figures declaring that we have a 70% shortfall because these are usually done to necessitate importation. It's the same thing that happens with maize. It's the same thing that happens everywhere. You do it so that you create an artificial need okay. so that you have a way for people to import. The person who ends up being damaged in this whole process is the sugar farmer okay. and the people dependent on sugar farming. All right, we've really run out of time. So all a very brief closing remarks. Uh, my closing remarks are yeah. this, that the task force, as noble as the efforts were, has not really lived up to the standards expectations. of expectations okay. that the president directed it to do. Okay. The president is a free marketer. He is for farmers, mm -hmm. and farmers hail the president's efforts to put the agenda on his table. Okay. But the task force has <coughs> let him down. Mm -hmm. Instead of benchmarking against uh, yeah. highly competitive countries, they want to benchmark against Miwani, Mohoroni, Zoya, yeah. Sony. Surely, you know, why don't you benchmark against the best? Mm, okay. When you look at uh, what's happening in this country, kibos, this these public uh, mills are not productive. They have not yielded results. Yeah. The people who have run them, their boards and managers, are working scot-free, having mismanaged the funds, they got a lot from sugar development fund, ran mm -hmm. it down, they have not paid back, they are just around. The board is task, The much. task force, uh, <laughs> as we speak, the MD, his MD, uh, Buenos Aires MD, appeared in court 
for not remitting funds. Okay. This is the kind of mismanagement we're talking about. Oh, it's not me. On, he was Saulo. in the court. Saulo, you know better. No, 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 no. I will not let Saulo politic with a sensitive issue. The case for which the MD of Chairman and Sugar has been taken to court is for not remitting levy such as pension. How do you remit what you don't have? Saulo knows that we are in a crisis and he can't play politics yeah. with a sensitive issue for expediency's sake. Okay. We withdraw and apologize. Yeah, that, has been, that has been clarified. Okay. <laughs> We are really pressed for time now. Yeah, yeah. very briefly. The, 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 the point simply is that this industry, in my view, yeah. let government move out. Yeah. This privatization business that has been on the agenda for a long yeah. time. Mm -hmm. If government cannot privatize, let it lease out. Okay. There are Kenyans with the money All right. who can buy these factories, right. make them productive, make them competitive. Okay. Two, let farmers and millers run the industry. Yeah. Let's okay. not think old style, yeah. restore SDL, which you mismanaged, mm -hmm. uh, restore sugar board, which, you know, uh, will, does not live up to a devolved system. That was to, uh, okay. tied up to a central government. Okay. But now we have a devolved system. So let farmers and millers run the industry. Okay, sorry, I've cut you short. Keep Thank you. Thank you. A very brief remark. <coughs> well, mine is to say the sugar industry had a meaning. Why they set up all these factories in the 60s, the first government knew exactly what it was doing to ensure resources go to the people. Okay. Sugar industry today in Western Kenya alone supports 400,000 people. And those are families, and those families need a uh, source of livelihood every day. Okay. The government can do us a service, Re retire all the debts, mm. remove all the obsolete machinery, set up new factories, and give it to farmers to run. All right. Honorable Kibruta Arab Kirua, former Agriculture Minister, Saulo Busolo, Chair Kenya National Alliance of Sugar Cane Farmers, and also former Chairperson Kenya Sugar Board, and former MP for Webuye, David Osiang, CEO Crestwood Marketing and Communication, and Board Member Chairman of Sugar Company. Faisal, I don't have such an elaborate introduction for you, but Faisal, I'm the <laughs> You really okay. branded me as the guy with the numbers. But <laughs> before we actually wind up, the, the, the most sticking issue was yeah. the cost of production. Yeah. It's actually funny that. Um, with uh, David and uh, other sugar millers paying such high rates to Kenya Power, they actually reported such depressed um, profits. profits that reduced Something to 92, uh, reduced by 92 percent. But that's because anyway. David, like, you know, David don't pay. Anyway, we have to take this break and come back with a different conversation on manufacturing. Phyllis Wakiaga is here. She's the CEO for Kenya Association of Manufacturing. We'll talk about the manufacturing industry. The main question is just one: what needs to be done to spar? the manufacturing industry. That's it, all right? She'll make the heads and tails of this conversation in just a bit.